Hello everybody, it is me, Chef James McInnes, and we're back doing another reaction video. This time we're doing Madher Jaffrey. How did I find her? I went on Google and typed in top Indian chefs and she was number three. And from going through the YouTube search, I see that she has been at this for a long, long time. Some of these videos are quite old, some of them are not, and you can actually see, just looking at the thumbnails, just the character that's been added to her appearance over the years that she started very young and she's going very strong still. So that is actually really cool that uh, her career has that kind of staying power. Just a quick reminder before I hit start on this. If this comes out after I've got 2,000 subs, well, we missed the chance, but if this comes out before I have 2,000 subs, remember when I get to 2,000 subscribers, there will be a post in my community tab with a poll where I'm going to select three or four recipes that we've reviewed together here, and you'll get to vote on which one I should make. So what I'm going to make is a, is a dish that I just discovered this time. You might call it a curry because that's what it is. Um, and you can have it with rice which is why, the way they would eat it, but you can also have it on toast. If you're just having a light uh, dinner, you don't want to eat too much, you keep the sauce sort of thick and have it on toast, which is also very good. Um, there are many ways uh, you can eat it. So to make it, the first thing you do is, I don't know how many of you do this, but I always wipe my mushrooms with a damp cloth. So you do that. And then you take all of the mushrooms, and depending on size, like this is rather a, a big one, so I will cut it into four, and same with this one. So when it comes to cleaning mushrooms, there's, that's always a hot debate topic, at least uh, you know when I was in culinary school it was, where some chefs would say, don't. Others would say, because the mushroom is spongy, if you get them wet, like definitely, definitely don't put them into a bowl and flood the bowl with water like you were washing, um, like say, beans. But, um, you know, if you have to wash them, then use, like she said, a damp cloth and wipe them. Another chef at school had this technique where what he would do is take paper towel, get it damp, wring it out, so it's, it's just damp, and then cut it into, uh, into squares, like a, like a chessboard. And then throw those squares of paper towel into your bowl and toss it with the mushrooms. And just the random action of the damp paper towel will do, will help you clean the mushrooms faster than doing individual. Um, the other thing, more maybe this is more advanced. She is using classic, good technique with the knife, um, and the mushroom doing the quartering. Um, I generally have to go through quarter one or two five pound boxes of mushrooms every day at work. So when I do that, I use a paring knife and I do it in my hand where I'll just hold the mushroom and then just come through with the paring knife, turn the mushroom and come through again. And I can run through a 10 five pound box in about six minutes or so. But you know, not everybody is comfortable bringing a paring knife because the knife blade ends up touching into your thumb but it's, it's like a blunt motion, so you don't you don't cut yourself. But some people that get a little scared about that, they think knife sharp ends should only be on cutting boards. Cut it this into four. And when they're smaller, you can cut them into halves. All right, so now the next thing you do is that you have to toss these with some salt and some turmeric and leave it for a little while. So I have about a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of turmeric. Now you have to really rub it in. And it's, I do this first because I'm an Indian and I'm used to doing this. But if you do it, if you can. <laughs> Then, now what will happen here is that it will get on your nails. If you have nail polish, clear nail polish, which I always do, they turn yellow. So even if you don't have anything, your hands will turn yellow. 
So that's the nature of turmeric. That's why it's been such a great dye for such a long time. I will put on some gloves and you really need to rub it in. You don't have to do this. No Indian does this. The Indians would consider this highly stupid. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay. Rub it in properly on all the mushrooms. So when you've done a thorough job, more thorough uh, than this, you leave them aside for 10 minutes and a little bit of water, they'll get a little wet. Uh, meanwhile, you have a can, I'm not asking you to squeeze coconut milk, fresh, I'm just going with the flow here and just using uh, canned, good canned uh, uh, coconut milk. If you let it sit, then the thick cream comes to the top. I buy my coconut milk can too. At my grocery store, they have an awesome um, ethnic aisle. So in my, my home city here, we have a lot of uh, greenhouse farming on the outside of the city in the uh, country space. Pretty rural. And a lot of the greenhouses have um, migrant workers that come in for the summer, uh, work at the greenhouses. So there's a lot of... Um, workers from Thailand and the Philippines and Jamaica and they tend to all so we have about five grocery stores where I live and they tend to all go to one grocery store and that one grocery store because of that has two aisles that are we'll call them ethnic aisles and they are full of all kinds of stuff you just can't really get at the other stores so an example, if I go down the baking spice aisle, it looks like the baking spice aisle of any other grocery store in Canada with the regular brands that we have, the sections of, you know, like there's like clubhouse uh, spices, alphabetical, all in one section. But then you go over to the ethnic aisle and there is a different set, a different brand of spices. And it's a, like there's a lot of repeat, but the packaging is a little different. And there are spices and herbs that you can only get in the ethnic aisle. And you can only get in the ethnic aisle of this grocery store because they're the only ones in town that carry it. So it's really nice that uh, surprisingly for a small town, due to the agricultural business uh, that goes around the town, there is quite a variety of, of uh, ethnic foods and um, it's really nice because I can go there and get stuff that I wouldn't necessarily be able to get in a town my size without that. You take the thick cream off the top till you reach the watery half underneath. You're going to cook with the watery half, which is what the all Indians would do. And all right, so we have the cream here and the rest of it here. Now, I'm going to start cooking. Um, I'm making it a little hotter, I think. All right, I'm going to put the shallots. That's about six tablespoons of very nicely, very nicely done. Thank you, shallots. <laughs> And I'm going to cook them till they are a little browned, which takes about two minutes. Okay, so this is more or less done. So what I'm going to do now is take it off heat because these, I don't want any of these spices to burn. And I'm going to put in some coriander and some chili powder. And I will stir it in on a lower heat. You can smell it, the coriander. Mm -hmm. Out of all the spices, when you t talk about the expiration of spices, of all the spices, coriander ground is the first to go. I'm going to take it off the heat for a bit because I don't want it to burn. And I'm going to put some now, is this one, two, three chilies? Two. With, with chilies, you don't know how hot they are. It's always a problem. Even I don't know how hot they're going to be. So what you do, 
is you take one from the middle somewhere, vaguely tasted. Hot. <laughs> okay. So I know it's hot. And so then I'm not going to use all of it. It depends on how, you, how hot you want your food. But you, the, the green or red chili, the fresh one, is sort of essential. So I'm just not going to put that much. I'm going to put this much. Okay. <coughs> I'll stir this around. Can you add more later? If it's you can add more chili powder later. And you can even put finely chopped green chili towards the end. But to get the flavor really into the mushrooms, you would need to put it. But I have put the other chili powder too. So it's not, it's going to have some heat, but the, the wonderful taste of the fresh chilies, you need to do, put it in now. Okay, now all the mushrooms. Uh. Yeah, that's an important question from the audience. Can you add more later? If you're looking, the way she's explaining it is like, if you, when you're looking to add the chili flavor into the mushrooms, you need it to cook into it. Um, and, but if you're just looking for heat, you can put that in at any point if you're just looking for heat. But, but if you start it now, it has a chance for that heat to get everywhere. If you're adding it later, you're really just going to get that heat when you get the chilies on that bite. So depends what you're going for and how hot you want it. Um, the other thing she's mentioned with chili powder. Now I don't. So I love Clubhouse chili powder. It's got almost no heat to it, but it's got a real good chili flavor. So I put that in a lot of food that I make for myself. When I want to add heat to it, I use uh, cayenne powder. So if I'm looking for heat, I do a chili powder cayenne powder blend. If I'm just looking for the flavor without heat, because I don't love things to get super hot, then um, yeah, I don't, I do not include uh, the cayenne. And they're liquid. And these are, have been marinated. So I'll stir these. There's a little liquid here so I can turn the heat up and stir it around. My heat directions, try and follow them because it really helps to get the right taste for the dish. So basically, you see, there's not much, too many spices in here. I will stir this on high heat, as high as I can get it for a few minutes. Okay, so now we've got to this wonderful point. Now I'm going to put in uh, the, the thin coconut milk. Perhaps I put too much. I should have put only three quarters of a cup, but never mind. More sauce for us. <laughs> and then I will bring it to the boil and let it simmer for 10 minutes. And there'll be a lot of room for questions then. <laughs> okay, so we are pretty much going to, since this is not what we are going to eat, we'll eat what is, has been cooked earlier. The, the next thing I'm going to do, after this is cooked for 10 minutes, uh, I'm going to put in, and this will boil down a little bit, uh, this liquid, and then you add the thick one that you saved. And just let it come to a boil and turn it off. And what then I added the heavy cream. And um, I put in too much liquid, but you won't do that because you'll measure. I didn't. Uh, and then when this has come to the boil, uh, turn it off and put some lime juice in the top. Now, in, in uh, Kurg, they don't use lime juice. They have a vinegar, which they make. It comes from a, a wild fruit. And it's a very strong syrupy kind of vinegar. And they put just a drop of that at the very end. And I was given this vinegar, actually, 
uh, and it was wrapped, triple wrapped, and I brought it all the way home. But I didn't test with it because I know none of you can get it. So I thought I just try it with lemon juice. So you put a tablespoon of lime juice or as much as you like at the end. So this one is done, and this one is, I'm going to heat it. Now what she's she's doing here, ha, be, having one already ready to go, that's there's a trope in. Um, American cooking shows. I forget what show started it. I think it might have been an infomercial for a cooker, to be honest. But they would make season everything up, stick it in the cooker, then walk over to a cooker that had been started before they recorded, and then say the classic line. And through the power of TV, we have one already done. So that's actually a joke. It's thrown around in the restaurants a lot in the in the kitchen. If um, say. I have a raw item to go into the oven to get roasted, and coincidentally, we are picking up the same item for a different table. I will pass it off to the uh, to the chef at the oven station, and he might, you know, open the oven up and say, "And through the power of TV, I have one finished for you, chef." So that's kind of a little joke that we like to to play at work sometimes. So this has the full amount of chilies. Yes. You could decorate it with these pretty little things here. Mm -hmm. Or you needn't. There we go. This is the mushrooms in the Kurgs Kodava style. Okay, so that was uh, a very basic cut. Action three, two, one, action. Okay, so I am slightly disappointed with whoever uploaded the video here. This is from the green space at WNYC and dot, dot, dot. I mean, they didn't include her tasting it, doing any kind of description after. I'm sure that that was done on the original broadcast. I'm a little disappointed to see, you know, because she, she's talking about, you know, like this is how you can do it, and she's giving tips and tricks kind of thing. So I'm a little disappointed. Although, although I've said this before, you've never seen anybody ever eat something and say, that was bad. I mean, everybody says after they, you know, we've all got this look on our face like, that was awesome, even, even if it wasn't. Um, except for me. I'm, I'm honest on that. Uh, watch my biryani video. Just skip to the end when you see me uh, not like it at all. First time cooking Indian food uh, for my YouTube channel. Anyways, with that out of the way, uh, you know what? I like the, you know, she was very calm. She wasn't trying to throw a bunch of information at you a mile a minute. I enjoyed the, just the slower pace of it. It felt like my grandma was in the kitchen with me trying to show me something so I enjoyed the uh, the motherly aspect of it it was it was touching um, I also liked the you know the trick on opening the coconut milk and letting just letting it naturally separate so you can use the thinner milk for uh, your reduction stage and then you can add the thicker stuff later that was pretty cool um, so yeah, I like that. Let me know what you thought of it and we'll see you next week. Um, until then I've been chef James.